Hey, great. So now we're getting ready to talk about the users. So we're in the second section in Module 3, which is customizing the QuickBooks environment. Now, when we went through the Easy Step interview, there was a question that asked us to set up the administrator password. And I explained to you at that point that when you buy QuickBooks, you get up to five users automatically, even if you have a single user version. The administrator, which is you, is one of those five users, so technically you can set up four more. Now, when I say user, what I mean is each time you close the company file and you open it back up, you can have QuickBooks ask that user to put in their username and password to log in. Now, here's some reasons that you do want to do this. First of all, it's one more level of deterrent if you've got someone that's hacked into your computer. Okay, so that's kind of a given there. Another thing is that it's easy to track down errors if you know who was working when a particular error was made. So there's a report you can run in QuickBooks called an audit trail. And that way if you happen to be off or something doesn't look right or you can't figure out where the error is, you can kind of narrow it down a little bit if you can find which user was working at that particular time and what the transaction used to be and what they've changed it to now. The other thing is that when you set up users, you can limit their access to certain areas of your data file. So this is really good if you have a part-time employee that you hire, and let's just say that employee was hired to work a couple days a week and maybe just pay the bills. Then you can kind of limit their access to other areas that they don't really need to be working in. So let me show you where the users are located and kind of how this whole thing works. All right, there's not going to be an icon here for it. You're going to have to go on the menu and you're going to click on company. And then you're going to see an option that says set up users and passwords. And then here's your set up users. Now just kind of notice while we're here that you can also buy additional licenses if you need to from this option. But I'm going to click on the set up users. Now you can see that the admin is here and they're logged in. So on the right hand side you'll be able to add a user, edit a user, delete a user, or if you need to view that user you can do that. Only the administrator can add, edit, or delete users. So the administrator has to be logged in. Please do not set up passwords and users and then give everyone the same password. Or please don't have one for the admin and let all your users log in as the admin. That kind of defeats the purpose of all of this. So make sure each user has their own username and password and they use it to actually log in. So let's go ahead and add a user so you can see how this works. We're going to pretend that we've hired Carol and Carol is going to come in and pay our bills a couple times a week. So we're going to give Carol a username. We're going to call it Carol and we'll give Carol a password. Now remember that in real life a good password is any combination of letters, numbers, and or characters. So we're going to confirm the password. Make sure I typed it in twice the same way. Okay, so the first thing it asks us is what do you want this user to have access to? All areas of QuickBooks, selected areas that we'll decide on, or notice this other option, if you happen to have an external accountant that you want to give access to your QuickBooks file, then you can actually give them their own username and password and notice that they won't have access to what they call sensitive customer data, such as credit card numbers and things like that. But we're going to choose selected areas and choose next. Now it's going to walk us through several different screens and they'll all have the same options. This one is sales and accounts receivable and we're not going to give Carol access to this so we'll say no access. And then it asks us about purchases and accounts payable. Now this is what we hired Carol to do so let's go ahead and give Carol full access to that. Now I'm not going to give her any more access but I want you just to notice the different areas that it asks about. This one here is checking and credit cards, inventory, time tracking, payroll, sensitive accounting activities. Now these are things like do you want this person to be able to transfer funds between checking and savings for example? 
or do you want this person to be able to make journal entries? If you don't know what a journal entry is, there are times when you're working in QuickBooks where you will just need to move money from one account to another. That's called a journal entry. Then you have the sensitive financial reporting. So those sensitive financial things we just discussed, this would be the reports that go with that. All right, changing or deleting transactions. Now, I would probably leave this where it defaults, but this top one says, do you want the user to be able to change or delete transactions in the areas they have access to? I would say yes, because what if Carol realizes she's entered a bill twice and she needs to delete one? The other thing it asks you is, do you want Carol to be able to change or delete transactions recorded before the closing date? So remember we talked in the preferences about the fact you can close the books. Do you want Carol to make a change in that prior closed period? And I'd probably say no. Okay, when I click Next, it's going to show me how I answered each one of the questions. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Finish here. And you'll now see that Carol is a user in my user list. Now notice the admin is still logged in. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to log out. So I'm going to hit close here. Now remember that if you have the user set up, the way you're going to exit your company file is by clicking on file and going down to the option that says close company slash log off. If you just hit the X in the top and you close QuickBooks, that defeats the purpose because when you open it back up, it's still going to have the last user logged in. So now we're back to our No Company Open screen. So here's how this is going to work. Carol's going to come to work and she's going to double click on the company file. And notice this time it's going to ask us to put in the username and password. Now it's always going to have the last user that was logged in in the username field. You need to drag across it and type in the new user and then type in the password. Make sure I remember the password I typed in. Okay, so let's make sure we can log in here. And now we're in our company file. Now you might notice a couple of things that look a little different. Remember how we had put our shortcuts across the top? That's because all of the options are set up per user. So just for a moment, I'm going to hit this little arrow that points back to the left and I'm going to collapse the pane so we can see the window. Now remember Carol was hired to pay the bills. So obviously she can get into any of this stuff up here. But let's say that she clicks on create invoices, for example. That's not something we gave her permission to do. So notice that it tells me that she needs sales and accounts receivable permission to perform this action. So it's not going to let her get into those areas she doesn't have access to. And that's kind of how that works. So let me go ahead and log back out again. I'm going to close company log off. I'm going to open the file back up and I'm going to log back in as admin so we can keep going here. And remember, always set up a password. I did not do it in this exercise because I didn't want to forget it. But in real life, you're going to do that. So I'm going to log back in and then we are good to go with the users. So what we need to do next is go and talk a little bit about the chart of accounts. We've got two videos for that. So I will see you over in the third section of module three where we talk about the chart of accounts. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you need additional QuickBooks Pro training to help you effectively manage your small business, check out our complete training courses for QuickBooks Pro. Click the learn more button on the left and I'll see you next week with additional videos.